online. Good evening and welcome to Prime Time News here on TV1. I'm Vishal Kapuge on behalf of News First, the voice of the people. Before we get into the news, let's first take a look at the top stories. Foreign Minister Ali Sabri summons Acting High Commissioner of Canada to inquire into sanctions imposed on former presidents. Suspect in Police Narcotics Bureau custody dies. No division within Election Commission confirms Chairman Nimal Punchiheva. Public Administration Secretary's letter on election cash bond recalled. NEC prepares to question Secretary. Nidahas Janata Sandhane launched with 13 parties and 62 factions. Ashumara Singh's accuser Adarsha Karandana arrested. Is a disease spreading among paddy plantations caused by state-issued urea? Farmers concerned. Now in your top story, during a special media briefing held this evening, Chairman of the National Elections Commission Attorney Nimal Puncheheva said there is no division amongst the Commission's members. He also responded to numerous reports swirling over the local government elections. All members of the Commission are represented here today. In any institution, be it a Commission, agency or even the Supreme Court, various opinions are put forth when a decision is being made. That is the order of things. That has happened within this Commission as well. Various ideas have been expressed. However, at the end of the day, such decisions are announced with the agreement of everyone. The Gazette notification calling for nominations was issued with everyone's consent and the signature of all Commission members. Canada imposed sanctions on four top Sri Lankan officials, including former presidents Mahinda and Gotabe Rajapaksa, over gross and systematic violations of human rights during the time period from 1983 to 2009. These sanctions prohibit the former heads of state from entering Canada, conducting any business in Canada and freezes any assets they may have in the country. A large discourse has emerged over Canada imposing sanctions on four top Sri Lankan officials, including former presidents Mahinda and Gotabe Rajapaksha, over, quote, gross and systematic violations of human rights, unquote, from 1983 to 2009. The Minister of Foreign Affairs Ali Sabri summoned Canada's Acting High Commissioner Daniel Bood to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs today to inquire into the matter. In a tweet, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs stated that the government expressed deep regret on the announcement of unilateral sanctions brought against four individuals. Foreign Minister Ali Sabri has also stated that the Canadian government has imposed sanctions on the group, including two former presidents, based on unsubstantiated claims. Incumbent President Ranil Vikramasinghe once said that the Mahindraj Paksa government is responsible for Sri Lanka being added to the UN Human Rights Council agenda. He made these comments on the 2nd of October 2015 while he was the Prime Minister. The then Prime Minister was responding to criticism being levelled against the government of the day for co-sponsoring a UNHRC resolution. <laughs> Who took Sri Lanka and added them to the agenda of the UN Human Rights Council? Was it us? Was it China? No. It was the Mahindra Rajapaksa government. We had to go and ask support from everyone to co-sponsor this resolution on behalf of Sri Lanka. Who promised the US that Sri Lanka will abide by the human rights laws? Who made promises to Ban Ki-moon? It's no one here. It was the Rajapaksa regime. Now if they are saying this is a huge risk, I'd like to that they were the ones who created a noose and put it around our necks. We have now freed the country from this noose. We have liberated ourselves. That is what happened. This is not a hunt or an attempt to betray the armed forces. We don't know how to hunt. The Rajapaksa regime are experts in hunting down people. They went hunting after Sarath Fonseca who won the war. Was there ever a better hunt? They made him a prisoner, 
forced him to stay in a cell without even a shirt to cover his body. If that was hunting, this is not a hunt at all. That was revenge. They took revenge from him for becoming a presidential candidate. Canada is a world-renowned country for its protection of human rights and democracy. Therefore, Canada is clearly taking this decision because there is in fact a violation of human rights. The Canadian government is very clearly stating that the Sri Lankan government has repeatedly omitted accountability for violations of human rights and that is why they decide to impose these sanctions. This was inevitable for Mahinda Rajapaksa. Next in line is Ranil Vikramasinghe. We remind him, he has detained Vasant Mudarige for an unreasonable number of days under the Prevention of Terrorism Act. Until today, they have failed to present an acceptable justification for his arrest. We also have to remind him that he is the one who attacked peaceful protesters and are now oppressing them to a point where they can't even set foot outside. You are conducting your reign of oppression together with a bunch of faithful, devoted senior police officers who are up for hire. Keep in mind that it is you, Canada and many foreign countries will impose sanctions against NEXT. A management assistant attached to the Sri Lanka Vocational Training Authority who was arrested by the Police Narcotics Bureau has died after being admitted to the National Hospital in Colombo with injuries. Samantha Priyarthi Kumara, a management assistant at the Sri Lanka Vocational Training Authority, had travelled to a restaurant from his office in Narahampita with a friend to have lunch last afternoon. After ordering lunch, Samantha had decided to travel back to his office while his friend had decided to dine in. When Samantha was returning, a jeep that arrived at the location had taken him away. Since Samantha did not return to his lodging till last night, the principal of the Vocational Training Institute had notified his family. We thought he had been abducted to steal his jewellery. Even before two hours lapsed, we went to the media, go to police and lodged a complaint. Then they contacted the Narahenpita police. Thereafter, they notified that he had been admitted to the National Hospital in Colombo and that we have been asked to come to the Maradana police in the morning. They did not give us a reason. Later, Samantha Priti Kumara's relatives had been informed that his body was at the National Hospital. My son, who went to work on the 9th, ended up being a dead body. When he had crossed the road to drink a cup of tea, they had bundled him up and taken him away. Not even his superior had been notified when he was being arrested. He had wondered why my son did not return to sign even until 10 to 12 in the night. We do not even know who brought him here. We have now gotten to know that it was a narcotics bureau. After the judicial inquest, we were told that he had not even been taken to the police and this was done by the Narcotics Bureau. There's mud on my son's body and clothes. He has bled a lot from the back of his head. When news first inquired from the spokesperson of police SSP Nihal Thaldua on the matter, he said Samantha Priti Kumara had been arrested during an investigation into a drug ring after he was surmised to be a key figure in the operation. The police spokesperson added the suspect had attempted to attack police officers with a broken glass bottle after he was arrested while he was being interrogated by the police narcotics bureau on figures operating above him in the drug ring. He further revealed a police officer had sustained injuries following the suspect's attack and other police officers had attacked the suspect's legs thereafter. The suspect had lost consciousness while being attacked, following which he was admitted to the National Hospital last night. However, he had died upon admission. According to the police, the injured police officer is being treated at the National Hospital. 41-year-old Samantha Priti Kumara, who was a father of one, resided in Telwatha, Mithyagoda. The Maradana police has launched an investigation into the deaths. Meanwhile, an individual who was travelling on a motorcycle was shot dead in Kalugalahena, Panamure. The deceased is a 50-year-old resident of Kampane, Omalpe. Police said he was shot while he was returning home on his motorcycle after dropping his two children off at school. Although the judicial inquest was conducted by the Amblipitia magistrate, the cause of the murder is yet to be revealed. Will elections be held before the 10th of March 2023? 59 days more.
Secretary of the Ministry of Public Administration Neil Bandar Hapuhin says that he was or he has rather withdrawn the directive made by him yesterday to all district secretaries to refrain from accepting cash bonds for the upcoming local government election. He further stated that the directives were recalled due to a technical error. The chairman of the election commission emphasized today that a secretary has no authority to give orders to the district returning officers once they have been appointed through a gazette. However, we will take steps to conduct an inquiry, but the district returning officers are appointed by the election commission as per the constitution. All five of us have signed the gazette issued by the commission when appointing the district returning officers. After they are appointed, nobody holds the power apart from the court to issue orders to them with regards to the matter concerning the election. When considering local government elections, the polling date is fixed only after nominations are accepted. Only then will the decision be made. What is the hurry? Special attention was drawn towards this letter even during the meeting between secretaries of registered political parties at the National Election Commission which was held this morning. Since it was revoked immediately after it was issued, the chairman said it will not be a matter of concern. Even yesterday, the government had attempted to stop the election because they fear it. A state official cannot issue letters to an independent commission in that manner. They are attempting to promote unlawfulness. We are the ones who want this election. The people want it too. It will preserve the democratic right of the people. The government fears an election. The stance of the SLPP is we must act in accordance with the constitution. Citizens and political parties alike must do so. An election must be held to preserve a democracy. This government has no intention of conducting elections. They try to postpone it time and time again. But it is unclear now that the NEC will not submit to any of it. These are amateur decisions of an amateur cabinet. Neil Hapuhinna had to revoke it immediately. The election will be held and no one can prevent it. No one apart from parliament or the courts can prevent an election officer from carrying out an order given to them by the commission. Opposition leader Sachit Premadasa also expressed his views on this matter today. We saw yesterday that the cabinet had decided and directed the district secretaries to refrain from accepting bonds for the local government election. The cabinet is issuing such orders. What is the cabinet trying to do? They are trying to destroy the fundamental rights of the people of this country. Fundamental rights are being violated because the laws of the country say that by the 20th of March, a new local government should be established. These are shocking incidents. The decision taken by the cabinet has caused great controversy and ultimately the decision had to be reversed. Now this decision needs to be reversed through the cabinet. The cabinet must meet and apologize for the error caused. How can a cabinet decide to stop the nomination process, to stop the process for placing bonds? The cabinet has no right to do that. We are in an era of absolute madness. The current government has no central nervous system. The head does not know what the body knows. What a hand does, the rest of the body doesn't know. Everything is halted. This country cannot move forward. The opposition leader expressed these views while donating the 68 bus to the Kathirugama President's College under the Sakwala program. Discipline and investigations should be taken against the cabinet, the cabinet secretary and all those who intervened in the decisions taken by the cabinet and also President Ranil Vikramasinghe who chaired the cabinet. More small-scale conspiracies are bound to be carried out, much like the illegal orders issued by cabinet to the district secretaries restricting them from accepting the bonds. Now we hear that some members of the Elections Commission are being pressured to resign. If they resign, the members of the Commission will lose their quorum because the Constitutional Council 
is not active in appointing the members of the commissions according to the powers of independent commissions. So the election will be postponed until the parliament appoints a new constitutional council and appoints members to the election commission. They are trying various tricks to take away the people's rights. <laughs> Views were expressed at the media briefing convened by the Samaki Janabala Vega today. We would like to remind Neil Hapuhinna that Anushka Palpita and Lalit Viratunga were imprisoned for taking the wrong orders from Mahindra Rajapaksha. Despite the implementation of instructions that violate the constitution, this government will be overthrown. We must make it clear that they will have to face serious punishments in the face of the law. Who advised him? If the cabinet took such a decision, the cabinet has violated the constitution. If so, we will go to court even against the cabinet. Also, whether the cabinet or the president has taken wrong decisions, Neil Hapuhinna has no right to implement any decision that violates the constitution. We hear now that the Samurthi payments are being delayed. The salary of government officials is being delayed. All this is happening at once. All because they want to delay elections. If they are trying to postpone elections by delaying fuel shipments and the gas shipments or by creating queues, then you must not wait in queues. You must take it to the streets and riot. We will provide leadership for that. I will take to the streets and riot. <laughs> While reports continue to emerge of attempts being made to postpone the election, the statements made yesterday of the UNPSLPP coalition being formed to contest the election were changed by the same faction today. The UMP and the SLPP are two separate parties. The SLPP has 13 affiliated to it. The UMP has 54 affiliated parties. There are 67 parties there alone. There are 69 parties altogether. What will happen is a merging of those parties. We held several rounds of discussions with the UNP. The two parties initially agreed to work together on establishing democracy and reviving the economy. Discussions are currently underway to decide which districts to contest under our symbol and theirs. We still have not reached a complete agreement. In contrast, the two general secretaries made the following statements yesterday. During a discussion a few days ago, a decision was made for the Sri Lanka Podujana Exat Peramuna and the United National Party to jointly contest the local government elections. The district leaders were summoned to discuss the matter. We discussed which districts we should contest under the symbol of the elephant, the flower bud and the common symbol. The basis of how candidates will be allocated was also discussed and agreed upon. At certain points, our policies did not match fully. However, at this instance, our first priority is protecting democracy in the country. We agreed with the UMP on that. As a party, we were able to defeat conspiracies to destroy democracy in the country. We were keeping our eyes wide open with great joy to observe how these two parties work together. A UNPP child is born. The United National Podujana Peramuna was formed. UNPP the relationship between Ranil Rajapaksa and Gotabe Rajapaksa, Mahindra Rajapaksa, seems to be a family affair. Those who accepted this fact broke away and joined the SJB. Those who are blind to this truth are still rooting for him. Now, I would like to ask the MPs who wrote poems to Ranil Rajapaksa on Facebook. How can they keep their heads straight and get together with the UNP and contest the elections? Palita Rangi Bandara, who claimed that he will join this alliance, has many court cases against him. Those cases are because of the problems with the politicians related to the Podujan. Then he himself says that now they are doing politics together. Those cases are related to the problems with the SLPP politicians. Now he himself says that they will join hands with this political journey. So if someone is still with the United National Party, they will be left helpless. The SLPP distributed leaflets about the bond scam. Now once the two parties have joined together, what will they put on the leaflets? The UNP on their leaflets kept claiming Mahindra Rajapaksa is a rogue. Now what are they saying? Take a broomstick 
put to your hand if they come distributing these leaflets again. Ask these people how they have the audacity to come back to these villages. The Sri Lanka Freedom Party, the Nidhas Janatha Sabhava, Uttara Lanka Sabhagaya, 12 parties and 62 groups came together to form a new alliance to contest the upcoming local government election. The new alliance has been named the Nidhas Janatha Sandhanaya, loosely translated to the Freedom People's Alliance. They will contest under the symbol of the helicopter. The new alliance includes more than 36 MPs from various parties. We discussed among ourselves and picked the name Nidahas Janata Sandhanaya, mainly because many issues have arisen with regard to freedom and democracy. If all of these issues are to be resolved, the sanctum of democracy needs to be preserved in the country. We can claim 90% of the local governments. We will compete in the north and east as well. If we are to overcome this crisis, the international community needs to witness the freedom of democracy bestowed upon the people. While we cement democracy along with economic experts, we will also compete with a clear vision to revitalize this country and bring it out of the economic disaster it's in. We will also commit fully to take this country forward free from corruption and deceit. The ruler thinks the country belongs to him. The party in power thinks the country belongs to that party. The family in power thinks the country is their property. The result of all this is what made the government play the part of the funeral director of the people and the country. They believe democracy is a mandate that they can purchase with their wealth. The main objective of this new alliance is to put a full stop to the corrupt and deceitful politics of this country. There are many points of error within this family political system. How do you undo these errors? The first step is to admit the errors. Today, we admit our errors with humility. We invite all citizens of this country to come join hands with this respectable alliance. The Sri Lanka Putujana Perumuna placed bonds to contest for nine local government bodies in the Ampara district today. The SLPP placed bonds to contest the local government election from the Munragala district today, headed by State Minister Vijita Berugoda and the SLPP's General Secretary Sagara Karyabasu. The Samgijana Balavegia placed bonds to contest the local government elections from the Hammathada district today under the symbol of the telephone. Give the people what they are asking for. They want an election to take the country towards a clean regime. The leaders of the country should give this a chance. The rulers of the country should provide an opportunity for this. The National People's Power placed bonds to contest the local government elections from the Colombo district under the symbol of the compass. If you continue to think that Ranil Vikramasinghe is someone who respects the constitution and respects liberal democracy, I think by now he's proven that to be untrue. He has very clearly proven that he is a greedy, power-hungry ruler who is not at all sensitive to the needs of the people. The NPP placed bonds to contest the local government election from the Kalutara district, headed by Dr. Nalinda Jayatissa. The cabinet suddenly decides that the country has no money, that some of the payments cannot be made and that the salaries of the state sector cannot be paid. What are they trying to do? The government is trying to postpone the election by claiming that funding is insufficient. The government has already lost the election. The National People's Power placed bonds to contest the local government election from the Putlam, Trincomalee and Gampaha districts today as well. Will elections be held before the 10th of March 2023? 59 days more. The State Minister of Finance said today the government expenditure managed on a priority basis. We are still facing the challenge of how to spend 300 when we just have 100 in hand. The Treasury and the Ministry of Finance manages all this very well. That is what the country lacked for a while. Whether it's Samurdi payments, pension payments, health expenses, fertilizer subsidies, we consider all of these to be high priority expenses on the financial management list. No matter what the challenge, we will not allow any problem to occur with what we have prioritized. Do not be afraid. The Treasury always does it's best to prioritize the expenses that needs priority. 
Adar Shah Khardana was arrested by the police cyber crimes division over a complaint lodged by Professor Ashu Mar Singha. Professor Mar Singha claims that she forcefully attempted to obtain 100 million rupees from him. For for two harvesting seasons, the farmers of our country faced dire straits due to the sudden decision taken by the then president and the government to ban chemical fertilizers. It has not yet been possible to solve this problem completely. The consequences of this serious decision are still emerging in various ways. Is the fertilizer issue responsible for the alarming situation this season's harvest is in? This is an investigation into the truth of the matter. Over 7,000 acres of paddy are cultivated under the Anuradhapura Nachudua Great Irrigation Project in the areas including Nachudua, Turuvila, Dolaheala, and Sravastipura. But the yellow spot disease is spreading in this area to a large extent. We added urea three times to these fields. On other times, when we use just two additions of urea, the plants grow well. But now, the more and more we use of urea, the plants burn out. This is a fault in the urea. Meanwhile, 7,000 acres of paddy fields cultivated under the Nikavaratiya Magalla project are also at a risk of contracting this disease. The spread of the disease worsened after we applied fertilizer for the second time. It didn't exist before. What you see here is a healthy straw, but this is an unhealthy one. But they are of the same age. This disease has spread to a number of farming communities in the Polonarwa district and over 3,000 acres of paddy fields have been affected. The Ministry of Agriculture says that during the last three seasons, the lack of proper application of mud fertilizer, urea fertilizer and bondi fertilizer has caused the crops to turn yellow. The Ministry of Agriculture stated that there is an increase in salinity in some paddy crops, while the yellow spot disease, insect infestation and smut disease are also spreading. The World Bank published its latest Global Economic Prospects report, casting grave predictions for Sri Lanka and the South Asian region. According to the report, global growth is slowing sharply in the face of elevated inflation, higher interest rates, reduced investment and disruptions caused by Russia's invasion of Ukraine. The report noted, in some economies, the deterioration in economic conditions has led to a substantial rise in poverty in countries such as Afghanistan, Pakistan and Sri Lanka. In Sri Lanka, output is estimated to have fallen by 9.2% in 2022 as the government ran out of the foreign exchange needed to cover food and fuel imports and to service external debt. The report emphasized on the decrease of the country's income gains over the past decade, including tourist arrivals, which continued to be depressed with international arrivals last October, being about one-third of their 2019 level. It also noticed the tightening of policies more rapidly, especially in Sri Lanka and Pakistan, in pursuit of macroeconomic stability. The report shows that Sri Lanka's output is expected to contract again in 2023 by 4.2%. And that's a wrap of prime time news here on TV1 for tonight. As always, thank you for watching. Stay safe, take care, and have a good night.